Hi, my name is David, and today I'm going to be restoring this mid-Atlantic 19th century side table. All right, so welcome to the channel. If you guys haven't been here before, my name is David. I'm a professional restorer of antiques in Washington, D.C. I've been at this since 1995, so quite a long time. Um, I've got a lot of stories to tell. I've scarred myself along the way, but it's been a lot of fun. So welcome to the channel. Make sure if this is your first time viewing that you hit the subscribe button for me and definitely click the notifications bell so you get updated on all the new videos. So now that we've got that out of the way, let's have a look at this side table. This particular table was uh, brought in by a good client that I've had for a few years now. Um, and unfortunately, <laughs> They leaned on it, or something to that effect, and rebroke this leg that's obviously been repaired uh, once before in the past. Uh, at some point, somewhere along the way, somebody put this enormous metal lag bolt uh, through the center of this leg to reattach it. Um, so we've got that problem to contend with. Also, you can see here on the piece that was broken off, um, <clears throat> there's a small screw there that um, is old that was probably added when they did this repair. I'm surprised that somebody uh, made this type of repair, to be honest with you, because it does look old. Um, and you would think that maybe just because something is old that they would have had better ways to repair it. But in this case, I would say obviously not. Um, in any event, it's a really utilitarian, nice table. It's got turned legs. Um, the walnut's really nice and aged on this. Um, I believe it is a mid-Atlantic table. Although, and the interior secondary woods in here are yellow pine. It's got really nice hand cut dovetails on the drawer, single turn knob, turn legs, just a classic uh, table. It's got a nice walnut top that was jointed into two pieces here. Um, so we're going to address that as well. Um, and the veneer is missing here, if you can see this. And then also um, here, the veneer's been attached, but it's, you can see these are crooked. These pieces are not where they're supposed to be, so we're just going to go ahead and take those off anyway and we're gonna fix those, and then we'll clean the whole thing up. And then in addition to that, the whole thing is basically loose and coming apart. Um, so now that we've got everything basically identified, we know what we wanna do. The first thing we're gonna do is, we're gonna remove the frame here from the top so that we can close this gap that we got here in the top panel. So let me show you what we do to get that taken care of. All right, so on a table like this, it's really not super complicated. Um, I'd say the skill level involved in this one is pretty low. There's no uh, special skills that we're gonna need for this. It's basically disassembling, um, repairing a couple things with some glue, um, and putting screws back in. The top on this is gonna be held on, and you can tell here that the top is split basically because it's drying at a different rate than the frame is, and this joint just hasn't held together. But that's an easy fix. So. We essentially have to remove the screws holding the top to the, to the base here, and that should do it. There may be one or two screws, in, or nails rather, from the top into the bottom. Occasionally people will do that as well, but it's not that common. Um, so this is a real simple process. Shrimple? Shrimple process. Anyway, so um, I'm gonna just back these screws out one at a time, and we'll pull this off. We'll see what it looks like under here. Shouldn't be really complicated. Now sometimes these screws, um, are stripped from people, um, they're slotted screws, all the old screws are slotted. If you see something with a Phillips head or a Canadian head square screw, you know, head, then you know for sure it's been um, worked on. All old furniture, especially 19th century furniture, if it's got any screws at all, it's going to be um, a slot screw, a steel slot screw. And these ones are. And I can tell these don't look like they've ever come out of there, at least not that one. Um, it's worth noting here that the, this one screw on the back side here is completely missing. It's just gone, so the hole is probably stripped out and, fall, and the screw's probably falling off somewhere along the way. Not a big deal, I've got plenty of old screws that we can use. You'll notice here too that these screws are typically, let me show you this, you'll see this often where the screw itself has been um, nubbed, nubbed down. They'll take the point off of this. And the idea there is that you know, just 
getting them the right length on these screws that you don't want this to, to point into the wood and split the wood and then come through the top. You definitely don't want that. That's not a good situation. We don't want that. Um, project like this, all said and done, uh, should really not take longer than an hour and a half. This is a pretty easy restoration. Um, it is gonna take two days to do it because the first day here, we're gonna do all the work here. Uh, I'm probably gonna set the top in clamps to dry overnight. Um, I can see these rails are after. This rail and this rail, were, well, not that rail. This rail has been replaced. That doesn't look original. And let's see if we get this one out. This one's on a funny angle. There it goes. The biggest trick when you're pulling out old screws, just be really patient, don't strip them. Try to keep your, your uh, screwdriver firmly planted inside the, inside the head of the screw. If it, if it jumps on you, press into it harder. Go slower. Um, so we don't want to strip these screws, we want to reuse them. In every instance, you always want to reuse your old original hardware. You don't want to get into, and even if you have to get in here with uh, like vice grips or something to take it out, that's better than stripping the head. This one's coming out though. I just got to be really slow with it. Um, last bit of that with a pair of pliers because it's just fighting me and I don't want to strip it. Okay. And it doesn't take much here, just a couple spins. I've got this about a quarter inch out of the way. All right, here we go. And another thing we're going to do now there's two more screws. Uh, let's see, oh, we got one more here in the back. And then there's two smaller ones up in the front here, which I'm gonna jump to a different screwdriver for those ones. All right, so I've removed the top from the base here. And honestly, I have to love, I have to laugh at myself sometimes. Sometimes I've been working with wood for so long and a lot of times I'm, I'm very human. I make mistakes and judgment calls that are wrong all the time. The more I'm looking at this, the more this looks like mahogany to me. I don't know why, this looked like walnut from this side. But from the backside here, it definitely looks more like uh, mahogany. But also what's really interesting here too is what, as well is um, this is um, this was a piece that the guy had and I guess he just really wanted to use this particular piece of grain in the top. That was, his, I guess, the, the major thing there that they wanted to do because you can see that it was a board that they've repurposed. It was um, sort of married together with this other board and then um, there was a bevel added here. I've just never seen this much effort to make a top out of something that was smaller. So you can see that they only had a, a certain piece of wood that they liked and they had to, in order to make it work, they had to come up with some other creative uh, ways to make it work. So that's kind of interesting and worth pointing out. You know, to this day, I still see stuff like that happen in, in modern furniture. You'll see a lot of couches where if you, you guys would be really amazed to find out what is underneath of your couch. So next time you see your kids jumping around the arm of your couch, trust me when I tell you, tell them not to do that because they are really assembled poorly for the most part. It's not much that holds those together. Some staples, some plywood, and some really flimsy rails in a lot of instances. Um, in any event, so what we're gonna wanna do here with this is get this back together. Um, I can see this would have to be rejointed in order to get this really tight. And I don't think that's gonna be necessary. I just wanted to go closer because it had a huge gap. It was about an eighth of inch, eighth inch of a gap between the uh, two pieces on the top. And God, it's going to be about the same even now. So we can just splice a piece of wood in there. That really wasn't my client's concern though. I'm just going above and beyond here. They really were just concerned with the broken leg. Um, but I don't like walking away from something that I could fix easily enough. So let's go ahead and glue this up, I suppose. Okay, so now that I've got the base uh, separated from the top, I'm gonna take the top and just set it aside here. Um, this will be glued back together. It's in a couple pieces here. These are the two jointed pieces. Um, and so I'm just gonna check this. I mean, since we're gonna go ahead and repair this broken leg, we might as well. 
make sure that it's stable. It doesn't make any sense at all to fix one leg and leave three loose legs. So as you can see, um, now that we got the frame separated from the top, you can really see how loose it actually is. You know, sort of having the top married to this, it stabilizes it a bit. It's almost like a chest of drawers. If you have a chest of drawers and there's a back panel on it, as soon as that back panel comes off, if the, if the cabinet's loose in any way, the whole thing will be um, really wobbly. So you can see here it's wobbly. This is a really simple fix. Basically, we're just gonna tap apart this mortise and tenon joint here, here, and here, and we'll squeeze some glue into that and then put some clamps back on it. Once we get this under clamps, we'll go ahead and just fix this leg. And there is something that's worth noting on this leg. There's a couple screws in it, and I'm gonna show you um, what's going on with that. All right, so let's tap it apart. So one of the things that comes in really handy when you're doing restoration work like this is to just have a rubber mallet around. Comes in great. Very useful for uh, knocking apart joints and uh, clubbing bad guys, you know. <laughs> All right, so this joint's apart. This one's a little loose here, so let's tap this one out. That one doesn't quite want to go, so let's just have a peek before we force it, make sure there's no screws or nails in the way that's keeping it together. Anytime you're doing this stuff, you always, you know, look twice before you start knocking things apart. Make sure you're not going to cause some, some issue, some unforeseen issue. Oh, just like that. Oh, we just did. See, this is what happens. You start splitting things. And sure enough, there was a screw running right through the top here, which I didn't think that was in there. Not that that's a major issue. We we'll put this back in there. But that's exactly what happens. <laughs> Learn from me. Don't do it yourself. But since we're putting it all back together, it should be a major issue. Let's take that screw out of there. This screw's on an angle right here. I couldn't even tell. It looked like it was going straight down. Sure enough, it was on an angle here. See, this is what happens when people try to start making repairs. They start doing uh, short-sighted things like adding screws. If you ever see anybody adding screws to something that's loose, you already know you're, gonna, you're going in a bad direction. Don't add screws. Take something apart, clean the old glue off, re-glue it. That's the right way to do it. Which brings up an interesting conversation. I see this hashtag all the time on furniture restoration, and then people paint the furniture. <laughs> it's like the total opposite of restoration. If you're modifying something, you're not restoring it. <clears throat> all right. This screw's a little bent too. But yeah, some, uh, some knucklehead ran screw into this. Not surprised. There's a lot of knuckleheads on the planet. <laughs> anyway, I digress. All right, let's get this out of the way. So once we get this out of here, look at that, that is uh, just a hot mess of a screw. All right, and this leg's loose. Let's see if we could be a little bit more gentle this time, right? All right, so that's up. But the good thing is, we didn't damage um, anything beyond that. Here's the piece that I pulled off. You'll see. I'll just put a little bit of glue on that. It'll go right back in there. It's really not gonna make much of a difference anyway. So no big deal. All right. So we're gonna clean that up. Piece that together. Let's pull this back rail out. That's out of the way. Let's check. That's actually really good. There's nothing really we need to address there. And these ones, there's a little bit of play, but not um, up and down. So honestly, I think those are good. These, I mean, the joint looks pretty decent, to be honest with you. I think trying to take that apart would just cause more damage than we would solve. So let's just put some glue in this, put this back together, and we'll put all this back together, and then we'll focus in on this leg right here. All right, so when we're doing this, um, I went over this in a previous video, but basically I'm just using a yellow wood glue. This is type on wood glue. You can get this uh, here in the States anyway, you can get this just about any hardware store, Lowe's or anything like that. They're gonna have um, this type of wood glue. Of course you can buy it on Amazon. But uh, the great thing about this glue is it's water soluble and it cleans up really quickly and basically it's very easy to work with. So we don't need a lot of glue on this. Um, these particular joints don't have a lot of old glue to really clean off. So I'm not too worried about this. This joint's never really been apart, so I'm not going to get too hung up on over cleaning these joints. We're just going to put them right back together. So 
just when you're doing this stuff, I gotta just paint these, these tenons on these piece. And we're gonna do the same on the, the female side, which is the mortise. The male side is the tenon here, in case you didn't know. And we're gonna do the same here. We're just gonna put some glue inside this crack here. I'm sorry. Because you guys can't see that, can you? And um, you don't need a lot. You just want even coverage. You don't necessarily want enough that it's gonna start squeezing out. Just, you know, just enough that the surfaces are, have some glue. And then, um, we'll see here. Same, uh, where's my leg? Now on this one, the piece that I split out, let's put that back. A little bit there. You know, I, I mentioned that um, in previous videos too about taking your time so you don't do this type of damage. But in reality, it happens, especially when you're doing as much restoration as I do. Sometimes when you've taken chairs apart, they just break. It's great when you don't break them, but that was my fault. I was in a bit of a rush there and I shouldn't have been. Okay, so I'm just gonna press that into place. And um, also, this is water soluble, so I always keep, anytime I'm gluing something up, I always keep some water around with a wet rag to kind of clean it up as you go. There's one of my pet peeves is uh, seeing like sloppy glue work. People that never bother to clean the glue up and you got drips coming out, it's just a, it's a hot mess. All right, and let's see here. So let's put this back on the split side was that side. So let's now put some glue onto this particular one here. You can see this is quick work. It's not very involved. It's very easy to do. That's why it doesn't make any sense to do something silly like add screws into this. People act like it's saving them time or something to, to run a screw. And worst of all, you see more, they, they'll put drywall screws. As a matter of fact, I got a good buddy of mine, a colleague, he does that constantly. I always lecture him about it. <laughs> he doesn't listen, he does it anyway. Um, <laughs> runs drywall screws for things. High-end restorer too. Everybody's got their faults. Anyway, all right, listen. Everybody shall remain nameless. All right, so let's slide this guy back into place here. Okay, got that there. And now we are gonna put a little bit of glue on this side and this tenon on this back rail. So far we're like what, 10, 15 minutes into this project? Not very long, and I'm filming. If I wasn't filming, this would be even faster. Okay, and a little bit on the inside here. And then we're gonna just put some clamps on this. And here we go. All right, so we're gonna slide this bad, bad boy in there, boom. And same here, we're gonna flex this open, get that in there. Okay, so let's go ahead and put a clamp on that. And we need a clamp from here to here as well, since we took that joint out. And that should do that. These clamps are a little big, but it's all good. So anytime you're doing clamp work, the biggest thing is just make sure you don't mar the wood. You wanna make sure you have these rubber pieces on here or put a wooden block on there or something like that. Just, you don't wanna damage the wood. Okay, put a clamp on there. And now before I, um, let's see here. Maybe I should go ahead and put that clamp on too. Let's do this, let's walk this in a little bit. Okay, so we're gonna now put this clamp in place. Okay, cool. So we got this under clamps now. So essentially, this is gonna be really nice and solid. Um, I'm gonna put one little clamp from here to here to catch that front piece that yours truly goofed up. Let's just put a clamp on that, pull that in tight. You see the squeeze out come out there. And I should probably put a little squeeze clamp on the top there too. Just make sure that that's as flat as we can get it. If I can get it in there, let's see. There we go. All right. 
Um, so now let's focus in on this front leg right here. And once that's done, this is gonna sit basically till tomorrow. All right, so you can see our brake here. This here, there's a small screw right here. And then you can see on the piece that was come off, there's a, there's a screw here as well. So we're gonna go ahead and take these screws out. We don't want those in the way. And this one I can tell is bent. I don't know how in the world he put these screws in here like this. We're probably gonna damage the wood. I might actually put this on a vise to get this one out. I don't wanna damage the wood taking the screw out. Let's see if we can get this to spin out without creating a problem. I don't know how in the world he got that screw in there. <sighs> Blows my mind, you know? Absolutely. Blows my mind that somebody did this repair this way. Meanwhile, they put screws in your bones all the time, you know? <laughs> this is just, I don't know, overkill. And it didn't work anyway, because look, the leg's still broken. So, you know, if they could have just done some dowel, wooden dowel and some, some glue without all these screws, they would have done the same job and then we wouldn't have this problem to contend with. So, lesson to everybody out there doing restoration work. Please stop adding screws you don't need. You don't need them. It's lazy, stop being lazy. I mean that in the best possible ways, guys. Love you guys. Just stop using screws where you don't need them, will you? All right. Okay, and then let's get this one out of here too. I guess they thought they were doing some good, but honestly, instead of doing this, you could have just as easily drilled a small hole and put a little wooden peg in there, and that would have been a much more appropriate repair, and it would have served the same purpose. You could have just put clamps on this. You didn't need to put screws in there to draw it tight. Totally pointless. Totally pointless. I swear I feel like half of the restoration work sometimes I get involved in is just correcting other people's mistakes. Not so much fixing the actual damage. This screw is totally bent. Let me straighten this out real quick. And then, um, can you see this here? Let me see if I can get this to work. Auto focus, baby, there we go. The head is on a different angle though, so this whole thing is just kinda, kinda wonky. The screw head goes right this way and then the screw goes whoosh, like that. Almost like a girl with summer teeth, you know? You ever heard of summer teeth? Summer teeth go this way, summer teeth go that way. All right, so I've got our piece here separated and we're just gonna put some glue on this. Doesn't need a lot. Just to glue on the wooden pieces. We're not gonna glue where the dowel pin was. I call it a dowel, it's really a, a big bolt that went through this. And make sure you, if you're doing this for the first time, that you're putting, if you're using this type of glue, this yellow glue, you gotta get it on both surfaces. This stuff doesn't expand and act like a filler. And, oh, and another thing. Please, please, please do not use Gorilla Glue. I don't know who is using that expanding foam Gorilla Glue stuff. Please don't do that. It's a big no-no. Stuff is not a good product for this type of work. All right, um, anyway. So we're gonna get this all in here like that. Yada, yada, yada. All right, here we go. Now basically just push this into place here and we're gonna give it a couple taps, go down. And we're gonna run a clamp across the square sides of it from front to back and tighten it up. So let's do that really fast. Just take a second. You wonder why we have all these clamps, this is why. All right, let me flip this around actually so that this, um, I can get this a little tighter. All right, then you see all the squeeze out come out. Here's where we use our water. And we're gonna clean that off. Make sure that's seated as tight as I can get it. All right, and I'm not gonna overthink this. <clears throat> like I said, somebody installed this, there we go. Somebody installed this lag bolt through this leg. I'm not gonna pull this out. I'm just gonna reset it. At this point, it's been there for a long time. Um, it screws in there. So I think we can just add some glue 
Let's see here how well it threads in there. Let's see, is it going? Can't tell. Looks like it's going. You can see they didn't even get it right. They didn't even get it straight. It's off centered, it's not straight. This is what happens when it's amateur hour. Okay, there we go. Does it go tight? No, but does it go straight? Um, and a good way to check and see if these are straight is basically you can, um, let me back this up here and I'll show you. A good way to check and make sure that these are straight is to check the measurements between the top legs. Let me walk this camera back. So you see here the tops of the legs here. Best way to check those is you can put a, a nail in the center here or you can just mark them or you can just eyeball it like I do. Um, you just put a, oh, this isn't even long enough, look at that. Where's my yardstick? I don't know where my yardstick went, hold on. We can use, uh, instead we could just use a dowel rod or something. It doesn't really matter what you use. The idea is just to check the, uh, the length on it to make sure it's the same. So let's just do it this way. You can just uh, take anything that's straight, put it from the outside leg here, see this? And then mark it on the other leg, on the interior corner, and then check it on the other side and make sure it's the same. If it's the same, you know you're basically square. This is not the same. This is a difference of about mm, maybe a quarter of an inch. Oh, actually. This has got some play in it. So um, a good way to do this, if you want to keep them straight, is you can put a square board across these, like um, you know, like just a square panel, and put a nail in them to keep them kind of where you want them. So um, we'll probably not do that in this instance because it's already got this lag bolt through it. There's nothing I can do about that at this point without ripping it out and all that stuff, and it's just it's overkill. So um, so let's pull this out and put some glue on it. We can at least. Uh, you know, you could also put some stretchers between these two, clamp them down, make sure they're tight. There's lots of different ways to do it. Honestly, with this one, I'm just gonna eyeball it. So you'll see here, I'm just running a small bead down the center of this. I'm gonna take my finger and kind of just rub it on. Um, what we want to avoid here is a lot of squeeze out once we get this. And it looks as though there is a gap in the center of this table, so I probably could have avoided putting any glue in the center, but, um, it's all good. It's not going to hurt anything. So same here, just a bit of glue. So I came in today and the top looked really good. I got it out of the clamps and decided to go ahead and just clean it up the rest of the way. So at this point, we're just going to seal this back up, rub it out, put a coat of shellac on it, and then we're going to wax the whole thing back up. This crack came out really well. It's completely gone and smooth to the touch now. Um, and the table base itself came out really well as also. Um, so I went ahead and there was a two small, small spots in there where basically the screws that went through the legs and I went ahead and cleaned those up and filled them with a two-part mohawk putty. They're just three small screw holes rather on the inside legs. So this is basically done. At this point we're just going to finish this top up, remount it to the base and we're going to be good to go on this particular table. All right, so as you can see here I'm really just brushing on some shellac. I'm going really thick with it because I want this to soak into the grain here. Um, we're going to level this all up as it dries. Um, you can see the color is really coming alive in this at this point. It's going to be a gorgeous tabletop when this is all done. And so there's really no need to uh, be too sparing with this. You can go really heavy on this since we're going from a bare table. It's going to drink up essentially a lot of this shellac since it was a uh, open wood. So going heavy intentionally here. So we're just going to keep brushing this out until it starts to sort of do its thing. We'll let this dry for um, a minute or two and then um, let's just check our edges, make sure we don't have any drips coming down here. It's going to make it look ugly. If you do have drips and you're doing stuff like this, you could just take a rag and wipe them in. Since this is all gonna be buffed out anyway, any high spots, we can sand them smooth. 
shellac dries really fast. It's only gonna take maybe two or three minutes to dry. So, and then we'll start to do a second coat and then after that we can start to build it up. So I've got the top put back on this table. I've cleaned it up. I put a coat of wax on the whole thing and buffed it out. Um, it's a very straightforward process. This is a really great table. It's mid-Atlantic, 19th century table. Um, hope you guys enjoyed watching along. This one was a pretty simple one, so there wasn't much to detail with this, but a fun project nonetheless. It's going back to its client tomorrow. So that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you on the next one.